Hey folks. Tears of the Kingdom is a jam-packed game with so many neat little details, fun mechanics and interesting facts which can often go under the radar way too easily. To highlight some of the coolest facts about this game, I've compiled a list of not 100, but 101 facts that only pro gamers know about the game. That's you guys. From in-game world facts to developer insight, there is a lot of cool info to learn about the latest instalment to the Zelda series. So, be sure to go and grab yourself a snack or drink, and let's get into some fun, interesting and secret facts about The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This game was originally formed from DLC ideas for the previous installment Breath of the Wild. The developers felt that their ideas were so big and expansive that they could be turned into a whole game itself. With this, Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild sequel, was born. In the first three days following the release of the game, Tears of the Kingdom sold an astonishing 10 million copies setting a record for the Zelda series by becoming the fastest selling title in the long, long running Zelda franchise. Bonus fact, to this day, the game has sold just over 19 million copies. The new enemies introduced in this game are pretty cool, however one of them, the King of the Kingdom, Gleok, is actually a reoccurring enemy which first appeared in the very first Zelda game. This appearance we see today is actually the very first time Gleok has appeared in a full 3D Zelda game, and they did not disappoint. The new Ascend mechanic which allows Link to ascend through ceilings is one of the coolest game mechanics in the series, but the origins of it are just as cool. It was originally a tool that the developers used to get around the map quickly, a debug tool. So it wasn't actually planned to be something for us the players until the devs realised how awesome a mechanic it could be for Link. Another neat developer focused fact is the inspiration behind using the same Kingdom of Hyrule again. Technical director Takuro Dota said that he was inspired by Wii Sports Resort when it came to reusing the same world, but with a focus on adding new mechanics. Wii Sports Resort's setting Woohoo Island has been used on multiple occasions across a few different Nintendo games, and it is truly iconic, as is this Kingdom of Hyrule. A sad but touching attention to detail in the new in-game world is by King Rome's grave. It sits atop the Great Plateau here, and whilst not being marked as a grave, we know it is thanks to the game files for these rocks. In Tears of the Kingdom, a royal claymore is planted in the ground next to it, a nice nod to the weapon we saw the king use in the past, pre-Calamity. The return of Ganondorf was very well received by fans. The King of Evil hasn't been seen in 3D Zelda since Twilight Princess in 2006. Not only did he return in the most evil fashion imaginable, but he returned with brand new, and for the very first time, full voice acting. We've heard him laugh, grunt and make noises like most characters in the past, but this is the first time he has ever talked in full voice acting. A very cool part of the returning Yiga clan is that Link can actually join them. Yes, you heard that right and it's very easy to miss and completely optional. Through a series of tests, Link can officially become a member of the Ganon-worshipping Sheikah Traitor Gerudo based clan. I wonder if Nintendo took notes from one of my very first videos to blow up. Cheese is canonically special in the Zelda universe thanks to this game. You can learn this by following a certain questline up at the Heitenno farm just below the tech lab. It turns out that Heitenno cheese was held back from the public, as its creator felt it was too good for the people of Hyrule to handle. Thankfully, Link helps bring the recipe to life, and we are blessed with Heitenno cheese. Before we knew the game as Tears of the Kingdom, do you remember what it was referred to as? Breath of the Wild 2. Yes, we fans got very creative and dubbed the sequel to Breath of the Wild, Number 2. The days of referring to the game as this are long gone, but there was a special place in time where that was the unofficial name of the game. In the new Zonai Shrines, which feature these large targets designed to be smacked with these Zonai Balls, can actually be cheated very easily. 
If you just shoot it with a bomb arrow, it'll activate, and think you've hit it with your Zonai Ball. It's too easy. Did you know that whilst Hyrule Castle is the main castle of the kingdom, back in ancient Hyrule during the era of founding there was actually a different castle which came first. The original Hyrule Castle, or Zonai Castle if you will, can be found on the Great Plateau. We see it in the background of some outside shots of the Temple of Time, as well as see the Temple of Time outside the window of the throne room, confirming that this is the castle. We also see a depiction of it on this geoglyph. Extending that last fact, the Hyrule Castle that we know better was built for a very specific purpose. A stone tablet en route to the secret passage tells us that the castle was erected in order to seal over the actual seal that King Raro used to hold down Ganondorf. This is why Ganondorf is found directly below Hyrule Castle. It was built to cover up and protect this dark secret. An interesting piece of cut content might relate to those last two facts. In the very first teaser trailer for the game, which dropped way back in 2019, we saw a sequence of events leading up to Ganondorf, one of which takes us through this dungeon, cave-like entrance. Unfortunately, this wasn't in the final game. It's possible that before the story was fully fleshed out, it wasn't decided that Ganondorf would be below the castle, that or this entrance was supposed to be in the game and actually be somewhere else below the castle but for reasons we don't know, was cut from the final game. In fact, a lot of what we saw in this first trailer didn't make the cut. The actual opening journey is nowhere near as big and expansive as it seemed in this first trailer. We were even supposed to go down here with a Don Don. That was also cut. Bottles of milk which Link can buy are obviously good for the bones. However, a very cool detail is that their label is a callback to Lon Lon milk from Ocarina of Time. The Hylian text even translates to exactly that. An unexplained but curious fact about Prince Sidon is that he is actually the only red male Zora in the game. We don't know why this is and it's never explained, but it's a cool little fact to know and theorise about. If I were to ask you what you believe the main race of Hyrule is, as in which makes up the majority of the population percentage wise, what would you say? Hylians? Maybe Zora or Goron? Perhaps Rito? Or even the Gerudo? Well, you're wrong. The majority is actually Koroks. There are over 1000 Koroks in Hyrule, a lot more than any of the races that populate the kingdom. In fact, I believe even if you combined all of the Hylians, Gorons, Zora, Gerudo and Rito, they would still be the majority. Did you know Link can actually be thrown in jail for public indecency in this game? Yeah, that is a very factual fact about Tears of the Kingdom. Try taking your shirt off in Gerudo Town and see what happens. The ending of Breath of the Wild, the prequel to Tears of the Kingdom, ends with Link and Zelda setting off to investigate a problem with Divine Beast Faruta. However, Whatever this was potentially going to lead to never came to be, and it kind of remains as an odd in-game lore mystery. Perhaps it has something to do with this next fact. The majority of Sheikah technology just disappeared come Tears of the Kingdom. There is no in-game explanation for this, but a developer actually gave us a reason. Hidemaru Fujibayashi has said that it literally just disappeared. The debated, but I guess factual reason for the Divine Beasts and Guardians are just suddenly gone is because they just disappeared. Tears of the Kingdom retailed for 70 US dollars, a $10 increase to the typical AAA Switch game price. A big part of why we can create vehicles to explore is because Nintendo wanted a more sandbox feel to the game, an adventure that we can make our own. The new fuse mechanic can be used beyond the regular fuse options. You can actually use random objects such as sky debris, bridge debris and pretty much any movable object, creating some rather interesting fuses. Hyrule Castle is an illusion. For so long, it was depicted as the floating Hyrule Castle. In reality, it's actually just propped up. A rather pointless fact, but one you need to qualify as a pro gamer, 
is that the horse command from Breath of the Wild has actually been changed slightly in Tears of the Kingdom. As to why? I don't know. You can actually hitch a free ride if you come across a traveller with a carriage. Just hop on and enjoy the free ride. When cooking meals, Link hums a variety of songs from the series. Take a listen. <laughs> when in scorching hot conditions, Link can actually use a Zonai wing to provide himself shade. Think smarter, not harder. The developers actually watched some fan-made content. This was revealed in the Ask the Developer interview series. No names were mentioned, but it's fun to think that they might have even just glanced at one of my videos. Tears of the Kingdom won the most anticipated game award at the Game Awards in 2022. The famous Zonai landmark Typhlo Ruins turns out to actually be highly inbuilt, not Zonai as many of us fought in the Breath of the Wild days. This is revealed by a stone tablet below the ancient ruins. The torch Zelda carries at the beginning of the game can actually be found deep below Hyrule. When it comes to facing Ganondorf, you can find a torch lying on the ground deep below where Zelda fell at the very beginning of this adventure. Registered horses from Breath of the Wild actually carry over to your Tears of the Kingdom save file. Despite many continuity complaints about the game, this is pretty awesome. The pond which Link begins his adventure into Hyrule after the opening Sky Island section is actually the exact same pond that the game's final cutscene takes place at. We both begin and end by diving into the bottomless pond. An Ouroboros, if you will. According to the developers, the depths was actually one of the quickest parts of making the game. Adding to that, the depths is actually a mirrored version of Hyrule. Mountains on the surface are dips in the depths. This is probably a large part of why the depths were so quick to make. Another depths fact is that beneath every stable, we can find a lino. One more depths fact. All light routes are actually connected directly to a shrine above. They also share the same names, but in reverse. Did you know that when you fuse a Keese Eye to your arrow, not only do they have lock-on features, but they actually pulse when there is an enemy in their lock-on range. If it's not pulsing, it won't find a target to lock onto. There are a lot of caves in this game, 147 to be exact. It's a good day to be a cave boy. Raru and Sonya are the founders of Hyrule. Despite the Zonai being more or less gone outside of Raru and Minoru, their influence in Hylian culture is really strong. We see the Hylians of this time wearing Zonai clothing, using Zonai tools and weapons, and everything is still very much heavily Zonai influenced. Master Koga, who we find in the depths, has actually been down there for years. In Breath of the Wild, he falls down the Yiga Hole, which we later learn in Tears of the Kingdom that it leads to the depths. In the time between the games, the Yiga clan set up multiple camps and also studied Zonai technology to try and aid Ganondorf. When gliding in the rain, the paraglider actually gets weighed down and collects rain on top. A very small subtle detail, but very cool to know. This is the only game in the entire series which uses the exact same world as another game. Some games continue and expand the world, but Tears of the Kingdom is the only game which uses the exact base world again. Did you know that you can actually put Link's hood up via a side quest with Heiteno's fashionista, CC? He's so cool. Tears of the Kingdom was actually delayed more than once. The exact reasons haven't been revealed in depth, but we can assume a large part of why is due to the global pandemic which started in 2020. It was mentioned that the devs wanted more time to polish the game, which saw it go from a 2022 release to a 2023 release. Dazzle Fruit can be used to quickly deal with skeletal enemies. It's actually pretty OP. Using Zonai Stakes at different heights, you can create actual music. 
The pitch of sound they make when struck changes based on this, and it's a very cool detail. Link's home from Breath of the Wild is now Zelda's home. Or perhaps they share it. Oh, the Z-Link fans really got some material to work with here. Also, halfway point of the video, be sure to subscribe if you're enjoying. Much appreciated. A cool part of Zonai culture is that Zonai youths brave these tall dives to symbolise coming of age into adulthood. The game was leaked online a few weeks prior to release. Leakers. There are 1000 Korok seeds to collect in Hyrule, previously 900 in Breath of the Wild, but hey, this is for the pro gamers, so add 100 more. This game continues the Zelda tradition of the game opening with Link waking up. Not every game does this, but most do, and it's almost a meme at this point on predicting if Zelda games will open with Link asleep or not. Technically he isn't at first, but then he is. So is this fact correct or incorrect? You be the judge. Below Princess Zelda's remembrance stones to those lost in the Calamity, you can find three soldier phantoms in the depths remembering soldiers that fell during the tragic event 100 years ago. The Julian Peaks Mountain was once just one solid mountain. We see this on the map of ancient Hyrule, but also learn it through a tale. Apparently, a dragon split it in half. The memory, a show of fealty, is a subtle reference to Ocarina of Time Ganondorf's betrayal to the King of Hyrule, both on his knees swearing allegiance. Both a lie. Adding to that, the two side chicks we see next to Ganondorf are believed to be Kotake and Kyume, Ganondorf's surrogate mothers. They both wear the blue and red scene in Ocarina of Time, a very subtle but neat fact. Shami of the Woodland Stable predicted the Tears of the Kingdom setting. In Breath of the Wild, she talked about dreaming of islands in the sky, and what would you know? Islands in the sky. The Zora royal family are not the only Zora royalty in this world. Sidon's wife Yona actually travelled from a different domain, and from a different royal family. The master sword in this game is capped at a 30 base value. Pro gamers know this as the supposed Blade of Evil's Bane, but it's actually very mid now. Ganondorf knew Link and Zelda's names at the beginning of the game, because in the ancient past Zelda was there at the Imprisoning War, as well as Raru telling Ganondorf to remember the name Link. He also knew the Master Sword, thanks to Raru. The word tears in the game title has multiple meanings. It refers to the sacred stones which resemble tears, it refers to the light dragon tears which provide Zelda's memories, and it also symbolises the pain and suffering of Hyrule. The three small buildings in front of the Temple of Time all contain the three symbols of the Golden Goddesses, Din, Nehru and Furor. The formation of them even lines up with how the Golden Goddesses line up on the Triforce, Din at the top for power, Nehru on the left for wisdom, and Furor on the right for courage. You can fuse a beehive to your weapons, and when used on your enemies, you'll get a very neat bonus as bees will help you to fight the enemies. Tulin's Pass Down Bow has the champion's fabric on it which Rito champion Rivali used back before the Calamity. Zelda and Sonya share a blood connection. Not only can Queen Sonya sense this, but it makes sense given their shared power over time. At Lookout Landing, you can find this unique Zonai model hanging from the ceiling. This is a new version and reference to the Sheikah Tech Lab Sheikah model we first saw in Breath of the Wild, both in Pura's workspace. Speaking of Mummy Pura, did you know that she is actually a bit of a shapeshifter? She uses an anti-aging ruin which she invented. This is why in Breath of the Wild she appears as a child, despite being an adult. In Tears of the Kingdom, she has perfected this. Real talk? This game is beautiful. That's a fact, right? I think so. There are a total of 58 wells that you can dive into. 
Below the Akala Citadel, you can actually find not only a mirror drop, but actually an underground fortress that mirrors the citadel itself. A fact you'll all hate, despite the developers openly acknowledging that fans wanted to pet dogs in an interview series post Breath of the Wild, you once again cannot pet dogs. Pro tip for getting clean screenshots, if you take a video of Link taking a picture, there is one very brief frame where none of the surrounding Sheikah text shows up, and you can screenshot this clean image, as the actual gallery and game is pretty low resolution. Every Hylia statue lines up with a Bargainer statue in the depths, including Hylia statues found in the sky. Deep below the Lover's Pond, we can find two lone pulsols on a heart-shaped island, a heartbreaking piece of environmental storytelling. The Stable Trotters musical group are all named on musical puns. The leader Mastro is a wordplay on Maestro, Beats is a wordplay on Beats, as in musical beats, Piper is a play on playing a pipe, Violin is a play on her playing the violin, and Eustace, I'm not entirely sure, but I believe it's a play on some sort of horn. His pun isn't as clear, but if you know, let me know in the comments. In the Hebrew region, you can sometimes find an aurora borealis in the night sky. It's truly beautiful. The Zonai survey team was set up by Princess Zelda due to her fascination and curiosity to learn more about them and Hyrule's history. We even see how interested she is during the opening of the game, stopping a few times to take a look at old Zonai work never seen before. Did you know that some Lizalfos actually turn into different elemental variants based on the time of day? It's sort of like switching to night shift, and very confusing to see for the first time. Fusing a sky shroom to your weapon has the ability to send enemies flying high into the sky. The lava falls seen in the depths of Elden are all directly below hot springs on the surface, a very cool attention to detail. The cloves of past heroes can be found in the depths as part of the base game. This makes them canon to the lore. I mean, I figured past heroes would just put them up for auction after, you know, make a little money, but hey, they're in the depths. The identity of the mysterious eighth heroine is revealed to be a male Hylian who joined Gerudo warriors in battle. It isn't said outright, but this is implied to be a former hero. The great leviathan remains found across Hyrule all have dark skeleton versions below them in the depths. The former site of the Shrine of Resurrection, now a Yiga cave, is built above the secret spring of revival. This water was likely a big part of how the shrine managed to restore Link's health in Breath of the Wild. It's not outright said, but it's estimated that before Link showed up at the lookout landing, both him and Princess Zelda were missing from anywhere between a few days to around a week. The ancient Zonai are heavily inspired by Aztec architecture and designs. There are 152 shrines across Hyrule and the Sky Islands. You can attract fish by throwing food into the water. It's not quite the fishing I dreamed of having, but it's something. You can make pizza in this game. Only pro gamers know that this is the best fuel for a hero saving the kingdom. Speaking of good food, there are a whopping 228 recipes to learn and make for Link to devour. But let me guess, he doesn't know what he wants. Link can now build his very own home just next to Terrytown, thanks to the Bolton Construction Company. He can also help to rebuild the pirate attacked Lurland Village. On the ancient heroes aspect, we can see the symbols for a boar Owl and Dragon, three highly worshipped figures in Zonai culture. We also see King Raru wearing this design. The majority of locations in this game are subtle references to every game in the series. A few examples are the Peak of Awakening being a Link's Awakening reference, Lake Saria referring to Saria from Ocarina of Time, the Breach of Demise referring to Demise and his invasion prior to Skyward Sword, 
and there are so many others if you just look through location names. Wearing a Divine Beast Helm makes the corresponding sage wear the Ancient Sage's Helm. This Sky Island is giving you the middle finger. Technically speaking, both Link and Zelda are well over 100 years old in this game, as Link recovered for 100 years which leads up to Breath of the Wild, and Princess Zelda held Calamity Ganon down for 100 years at the same time. Tears of the Kingdom takes place a few years on from the last game, so the pair are probably anywhere from 120 years old to 125 years old, give or take, as they were both 1718, 100 years before Breath of the Wild. The Silver Lionel Saberhorn is the best thing to fuse your weapons with. Check out that stat boost. Tears of the Kingdom is the 20th mainline entry to the Zelda series. Saving the best to last, fact number 101 that only pro gamers know is that Tears of the Kingdom is a Vidya game. Those are 101 facts that only pro gamers know about Tears of the Kingdom. You are now officially a pro gamer with this knowledge, and I'll take my payment now. Just kidding. I'll settle for a like and considering to subscribe if you enjoyed and learned some new facts. A very big shout out goes to my channel supporters for helping to make this video possible. If you'd like to help support my content and get yourself some cool goodies then consider joining today via the links below. My socials and discord server are also linked if you'd like to keep up to date with me. That's all for today folks, thanks for watching. I hope you all have an amazing day or night and until the next time, I've been Hyrule Gamer.